Hey, hi, everybody. This is Jim Milligan with Fustini's. Welcome back to uh, Fridays with Fustini's. I'm back in my quarantine uh, spot in our kitchen here with all my folks. Um, this is our second uh, Facebook Live. We hope to be technically a little bit more savvy uh, today than we were uh, last week. Um, but I've got Denise and Holland and then Charlene and Petoskey all set to do. Today we're going to do um, some uh, appetizer recipes that are simple, very, very uh, flavorful, um, and should be fun to do with your uh, the folks that you're uh, with in the kitchen. So we'll wait a little bit for people to log in. I wanted to fill you in on a couple things uh, that we just announced in our newsletter yesterday. One is that we've expanded our curbside pickup service. For, so for those of you that either want to avoid our 995 flat rate shipping or just looking for a reason to get out, which is certainly a good reason. We're gonna be doing curbside service noon to four on Tuesday. So we've opened up the window that you can come and pick up products. You'll email your store manager or call the store and leave a message, but ideally email us and we will take your order and have it ready for you to pick up on Tuesdays. We've also, since our tasting rooms are temporary, temporarily closed, we've also added our small little sampling bottles like this one, the West Michigan Blueberry, onto the website. So now you can order these individually. For, so for something you've always wanted, you've been curious about, you don't really want to commit to a larger size bottle, smaller portions. This is something you can now add into your orders online. Um, and I think that's about it. We're going to go through a couple recipes. We'll have some uh, discounts for you on the uh, products that are used by Denise and Charlene that we'll announce at the end of the, um, of the, the demonstrations. And so with that, I'm going to turn over to De Denise and Holland. Uh, Denise, welcome aboard. It's all yours. Oh, one one other thing. If anybody has any um, any questions on the recipes or anything as we do this Facebook Live, I'm going to be watching, and we'll re we'll do our best to respond to you. Okay, Denise. Hey, thanks. So I actually have two recipes I'm going to do. Um, and then Charlene's going to jump in in between there. The first one I'm going to do is an olive and cheese skewer. Really simple, really easy to make. So let me just adjust. There we go. So basically, I took this off the stove just a little bit before starting. Um, it's got the gremolata olive oil in it. It's got some cut up rosemary. It's got some lemon juice and some lemon um, peel in it. And then it call, this recipe calls for a lot of different spices and blends. And I don't have a whole lot of that. So I am using our Tuscan blend, spice blend. So I put that in there just to heat that up a little bit, to get it really aromatic and the fragrance really. Sorry about that. Wow. Um, so let's get going. <laughs> if we have anybody I back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> That's all right. Anyway, um, so I've got my warm olive oil, which is really fragrant. And this is a really easy recipe. So I've got some Manzanillo olives. I'm going to put in my bowl. And to that bowl, I'm going to add some red pepper. So we'll just cut half of this. And I remember the wise words of Chef Andy is to always take all the pith out so that taps into the moisture of your pepper. 
So I'm just gonna cut these into triangle chunks and add that to my olives. And then I'm gonna take my olive oil and pour that in there. And then since my oil has cooled a bit, I can add my cheese. So I just have some white cheese. We're gonna cut up into chunks. So cut like sticks, and then we're gonna cut the sticks into cubes. And the key is to make sure that oil was cool enough that you're not gonna melt all these cubes of cheese that you put in there. And that is just gonna marinate for a little while. But through the magic of Facebook, I do have some that I have been marinating. So this is what it looks like. And then you can either cut up some salami into cubes or what I was doing was just taking these already sliced salamis and folding them up. So we're gonna take a skewer and then put on an olive and put on a piece of pepper. and then put on a cube of cheese, and then our salami. And you can just repeat that numerous times, and this is what it looks like when you get them all done. So Voila. Yes, great with wine. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. So, and that was with the gremolata olive oil. And that's my first recipe. Super. All right. All yours, Charlene. Hey, everybody. Um, I am in the store today, which is kind of weird because it's a very, very empty store. But at least I got good smells out of the kitchen. It's been a long time since anyone's cooked in this uh, kitchen in the store. So today we're going to be doing some flatbread pizzas. Um, the one that is going to be um, featured is a pineapple or peach and prosciutto flatbread pizza. These are awesome uh, for the summertime. We do them on the grill. I had to kind of make do here in the store today. So we are going to not grill them, but kind of grill them. So first you just take your uh, pineapple, I had a fresh pineapple and you peel it, and then you cut it in half and then cut it into quarters. And then you take the center section, which is where uh, your core is, and just slice that right out of there. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do after you slice the core out, but depending on how many pizzas you make, um, you might only need a quarter of a pineapple, um, but if you make a couple of them, use half of your pineapple. So we're gonna get these ready to throw on the grill. I'm just gonna slice them into um, you know, about a half inch, quarter inch slice here. And then we're gonna throw them into a bowl. And then we're going to mix it in with a little bit of our blood orange olive oil. Super good with grilled pineapple. If you have peaches, it's the same thing. Do the blood orange olive oil with your peaches. Peaches are an awesome addition to this recipe instead of the pineapple. And then once they're nice and coated, then you're gonna throw them on the grill. Um, I do not have a grill in the store, but I have this beauty. It is a panini press, which actually makes really incredibly beautiful grilled pineapple. Look at all those beautiful grill marks. So it kind of works in a pinch. Then you um, take your flatbread you can certainly make your own flatbread, but this is just store-bought flatbread. And this is a non bread that you can get from the grocery store, usually in your deli section. Um, it's much simpler. 
And then we're gonna take some Gruyere cheese, which is kind of a really floral, um, nutty cheese that works really, really well with fruit. So we're just gonna cover this and then we're gonna throw it in the oven. Now, once that's out of the oven, or if you have a grill and you're grilling it, throw it on the grill. You want it just enough to melt the cheese. So then we're gonna take um, our uh, flatbread with the melted cheese on it already and just start topping it with this beautiful grilled pineapple that we have here. And then we're gonna take some prosciutto and just kind of top the pizza with the prosciutto, just kind of randomly so you can kind of see all that nice pineapple and your prosciutto as well. Now there's other things you can add to it. If you wanna put a little goat cheese on here, you certainly can. Um, today we're gonna to put a little arugula on it just for a little pop of color and a little added freshness to our pizza. We don't need a ton of it, just a little bit of it. Such a nice appetizer for summer gatherings. Hoping we can have summer gathering soon. Um, and then after it's all taken care of like this, then you're just going to want to slice it into individual kind of slices here. And then we can put it on um, a nice charcuterie board. And you have a really beautiful grilled pizza. Can you kind of see that? Now I am going to do another one really quickly while I have your attention. This is um, a uh, very similar recipe. We're just going to use the same oil and the same vinegar. And we are going to do a caramelized onion and goat cheese pizza. Now coming up on morel season, I also would like to put some morels on here. I don't have any yet, but I hope to have some very soon. <laughs> Hey, Charlene. Other crust here. And throw these really nice, um, super caramelized onions on there. Super sweet in and of itself. If you want to um, caramelize them in the blood orange olive oil, that's a really nice way to do it. If you're adding um, mushrooms to it, I might use a little bit more of a savory oil. And then we just throw our goat cheese right on here. Again, super easy if you buy these non breads right from the grocery store, then you don't have to worry about it. And it's a super quick appetizer if you're having company over. And then again, you just slice it up and throw it on a charcuterie board um, or plate even, and it's uh, ready to go. So I think that's about it. Hey, Charlene. Yeah. You're so good at doing two things at once. Um, <laughs> can you recommend if if our customers out there don't have this the particular oil or vinegar that you used in both of these recipes, which by the way are now up on Facebook for everybody to see? Okay. Uh, can you recommend some alternatives? Certainly. So <clears throat> with the fruit pizza, the pineapple um, or um, peach. One, I would recommend uh, one of the fruitier olive oils. So like a, a Meyer lemon or Persian lime. Um, if you don't have anything that's fruity for an olive oil, use one of a, a nice varietal olive oil and throw a little squeeze of lemon or lime in with your pineapple just to give it that sweet citrus flavor. Um, with the mushroom one, or with the, excuse me, the um, onion one, if you're going to be adding mushrooms to it, which is awesome lately, I've been getting these really beautiful um, oyster mushrooms that are grown locally. We've been just roasting them in the oven with a very, um, a, a really nice single varietal olive oil. So you could use pretty much any kind of oil. If you're doing mushrooms, I would stick with the savory side. If you're just doing the onions, you can also go fruity as well. Excellent. Oh, wait, I forgot to top these. Then we have to hey. top these. Hello. Hello with our Reserva vinegar here. It's a beautiful, thick balsamic vinegar. 
used for like a finishing, like a glaze. And you can't have it without these. I thought these looked a little naked. Okay. Can you see them? Oh, Beautiful. Delicious. Beautiful, Charlene. Thank you so much. Awesome. And let's let's uh, turn it back to Denise. I think she's got one more recipe to wrap this up. Yes, and hopefully I won't lose you this time. Um, so the last recipe I'm going to make, it's we, I call it just Mexican pinwheels. And really, I'll show you what ingredients I use. But really, you can add other things to it, like uh, black beans or, um, or admit things. I have some friends that don't like the texture of tomatoes, so I would leave that off if I knew they were coming. So it's really, you can make it your own. Um, I'm gonna use the chipotle olive oil, but if you like things more spicy, feel free to use our harissa. Um, cayenne will give it a really nice kick as well. So what I'm going to do is I started with some softened cream cheese. And to that, I'm gonna add our chipotle oil. I'm gonna add some ground cumin. And then I'm also gonna add some um, avocado. And I kind of mash them up a little bit ahead of time, just because then it helps spread easier on your tortilla. So we got this all going. And then obviously, if you don't like avocados or your kids don't care for them or whatever, I mean, feel free to omit that. I think this would also be a fun recipe um, for your kids to make because they can top it however they wish. So now that I've got my avocado and my cream cheese all mushed together, I'm going to take some and just spread it on the tortilla. And it's okay for chunks. I think that's kind of cool to have some. The, the avocado doesn't have to be totally smoothed out. So chunks are nice. All right, so that's the bottom. And then on top of that, we're gonna add some green onion. And I kind of go up and down with my um, ingredients because I'm gonna roll from side to side. That's what, that way at least you know each bite will get something of each of the ingredients. So then I've got a little jalapeno. And again, you can adjust this based on how spicy you want it or mild. My family likes things Pretty, with a bit of a heat, I guess. So we're gonna put some jalapeno on there. Save that for the next one. And then really, it's just your tomato. And some cheese. I didn't have pepper jack cheese with me, so this is just a Colby Jack cheese. And then, a little bit of cilantro. So, and then what you do is tightly take it and roll it up on your plate. Hey, Denise. Yeah. Denise, can you can you oh. adjust the camera so that people can there. see the food? There you Thank go. you. So I'm tightly rolling it up like this. And then in the plastic wrap, we're just gonna roll it up so it stays together. And then I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for a couple hours. However, for lunch, I made some up ahead of time. So these have been in the refrigerator for a while. And we're just gonna unwrap them. And then we're just gonna cut them into probably about two inch width 
slices. And then we're just going to take them and arrange them on a platter. Like so. And then I've got a couple more to do. You could put some either guacamole or maybe some queso dip or some salsa in the middle that they could use for dipping. So that's what I have. Beautiful. Nice little snack to save for tonight when the wine opens, huh? Um, that might be open already. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, Denise and Charlene, thanks to both of you. Um, thanks to our audience. Uh, as we move through, try to figure out this technology. Fortunately, all three of us have 30 year old and younger uh, family members with us that can help us out. So appreciate your patience. Um, the recipes are on Facebook. Uh, also the special purchase offers have been loaded so so you'll see them in the new product section of the website and they'll be called um facebook live denise's picks facebook live charlene's picks and then there will be another item that will have i think four or five they're all discounted at about 15 percent so make sure to check those out um and remember also to take advantage of our offer to add a, a 60 milliliter sampler bottle um, at no cost, complimentary, something like this into your order for you to try something you haven't tried before. Um, we want to get, we want to make this interactive. Uh, and I appreciate seeing some things as we went through this Facebook Live. We selected appetizers based on what we asked you, appetizers, vegetables, so on and so forth. So you're gonna, we, we wanna, this is for you. This is to help you get through this um, situation we're in in a healthy, happy way. So we wanna help you. Um, so any feedback you have for us on how we can make these uh, Friday Facebook Lives uh, more useful, let us know. And I want to close by thanking everybody out there, our customers, for the strong support uh, you're giving us during this uh, time. Our, um, our business is surviving thanks to you, our customers. Um, and we really appreciate it. It's a heartfelt, heartfelt thank you. And we hope to uh, keep this on as we move towards hopefully uh, openings of the careful, safe openings of the tasting rooms um, when it when it makes sense. So, thank you very much again. Um, give us feedback, and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Thanks. Bye.